We are live on YouTube also. We're going to be live on YouTube as well. Yeah, yeah. We are already live. We're already live. We're going to be live on YouTube. Yes. Yes, yes. They on their on their end. Okay, okay. Already live. I'll uh, if you want, I'll share the link. Oh, can you share yeah, the link with us? Or, yeah, send it to me, please. Yeah, we're going to be live on YouTube as well. Yeah, yeah. We are already live. Yeah, there's we're a already delay. Live. I hear it. Yes. 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 So, I mean, you do two separate things, though. Because I'm going to step out. Gonna step yes, Father, I've shared the link sharing on WhatsApp. I mean, just two okay. Things going on right now. He shared the link on my phone, Julie. Thank you. Can send it to yeah, you don't yeah, know how to work out better than me. Easy, but, yeah. Yeah. So, so do, do this first. Yeah, I'm from, yeah, I'm, I stopped. I stopped sharing the screen. Yeah, Father. Yes. Yeah, well, well, two quick things. When I mute all, they won't be able to unmute. Yeah, so you can watch it. Correct. Yeah, but you will, you will also be muted. Then you'll have to unmute. You'll have the access to unmute. So, Rani, he is <laughs> saying that He's going to mute everybody and then you have to unmute yourself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but he, he said when he lets everybody in, he's going to mute everybody. Okay. So, so I'm going to. As long as you call us, you're fine. You can do it. What was that? You want me to well, mute it right now or you just want me to leave it alone? No, no, leave it. Leave it. He's, he'll mute you on his end. Let him, okay. let him hear the music for the Yeah. Yeah. You heard Ronnie? We, we, don't, yeah, we haven't gone yet. Are, are we live? Yes, Father, we are live. Oh, oh we're live problem. already. <laughs> All right, That's so not a problem, don't worry. What's your answer? But you can give it a shot, go ahead. But we'll start at 11 only, 11 .5 Yeah, only. no problem. Yeah, we have a couple of minutes, right? We just yeah. want to do a sound check. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ajin. Yes, Father. Just give me the breakdown of the day as, as again. Um, so we're going to do... Um, Praise and worship for like 20 minutes, right? Yeah. And then the talk, 40 minutes, yeah. the first part. Yeah. Then another 10 minutes of praise and worship. Yeah. Then part two, 40 minutes. Yeah. And then question and answers. Yeah. 40 yeah. minutes. Yeah. And then right answer. Yeah. Yeah. So only only two two changes, little minor changes. We'll be welcoming you initially. Okay. Uh, then the program coordinator is Renan from Goa. Goa is a city in De in India. Who is it? Remy? Renan, Renan. Renan, Renan. Renan. He'll, be, he'll be welcoming. Then uh, towards the end, uh, the official Thanksgiving will be by uh, Brother Cyril John. Okay, no problem. After you finish. After you finish. Give it a shot. You have time. We'll the light of the world You slip down into darkness Open my eyes, let me see beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. And here I am. Here I am. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Brilliant. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Superb. Yes. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. All right. So we are ready. Yeah, translate it right now. We whenever, <laughs> whenever. Yeah, sorry, guys. You can't hear him except for me. And and if you want to speak to me, Ajina, I need to have the headphones on. Okay. So if I don't if I don't have the headphones on, um, when I'm talking, I'll take them off since um, we nobody will be talking, right? Yeah. And then and then you know if you want to talk to me, I need to put the headphones on. Cool, 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 father. Okay. If I want to communicate anything, I'll do that.
with you. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. So should I should I put on my 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 mask and start off like this, Ajit? <laughs> with my New York mask. So COVID from New York to India. Yeah, co COVID, COVID in New York, exactly. Yeah, COVID, COVID has united all the youth, all across COVID the globe. COVID has united everybody. Yeah. So not only from yes, India, yes, Father, uh, youth from ten more countries will be there. There's gonna be people from ten countries. Yeah. Today. How many people total all around? Uh, all around, we're expecting uh, more than 200. All right, more than 200 people. Yeah. yeah, so from 10 different countries, correct? Yep, yeah. yep. No pressure. I do. Okay, perfect. All right. Look at that. Even, even more can be there. <laughs> more yeah, God willing, God willing. So you let us know how long before uh, we begin. Yeah, yeah, we have further another seven minutes more. An after All that. right, another seven minutes. Yeah. All right. Good. So these are two of my young people from my parish, Ajin. Lovely. Yes. <laughs> Maria Isabel and Aureling. Lovely, lovely. Welcome, See, welcome, he, Maria. He said lovely. <laughs> <laughs> lovely. <laughs> I love Ajin, man. We love you, You're father. You're lucky I love you, Ajin. It's 1.30 in the morning, man. <laughs> That's what our name says, Youth United for Christ. Exactly. Very good. No barriers. Now COVID has united all of us. COVID no has united barrier. everybody. Amen, amen. No, no country barriers. We are all together. No barriers. India, United States. All around the world, we're united. More than you remember, Father, this was our dream, uh, but we thought that this will happen three after three, four years. But the Lord, yes, took our dream, yeah, yeah, amen, amen. You're right. Um, Ronnie, yes, sir. Um, could I ask you for a favor when it's uh, you know. Uh, so we can stick to the 40 minute thing okay. you know about 30, 30 yeah give me a mark okay. cool. like you know 35 at okay. least 30 or 35 give me the, give you the time. Okay. or send somebody to do it whatever we start with yeah just so I can gauge it you want to put down Oh, yeah, pick it up. Yeah, so, are you ready? All right, so hold this first. Okay. Yeah, we'll just put this on. What's that? The other one? Oh. Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit of 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 a little bit Oh, no. Here, pass me that. Give me, give me that one. No, that was too tight here. Uh, hold on. Oh, give me this one first. Tell me right away. Ronnie. That's 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 short. Siéntate libre. Yo, lo primero 20 minutos. Lo que le pide si está muerto. You heard, Ronnie? Give him more space, more life with, the, with this cable. Does it reach? I don't know. Si quieres empezar a hablar. Mambo, lo que tú quieras. Mambo, no. Pero, you know. Uh, Yeah, I request the group moderators to send a message that we are online. We'll start in another four minutes time. All the sort of group moderators and uh, the program coordinators. So if you want to say something, you can interact. You've got three minutes more time. So now you can unmute yourself if you want to say something. <laughs> Father Joseph has done the sound check. Uh, the video test is over and the music ministry has also done the sound check.
So welcome all my dear sisters and all the youth. Yeah, Renan. Renan, welcome. Good morning, everyone. Praise the Lord. Good morning. So happy to see all of you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Arjun, should I introduce now, Le? No, we'll start at eleven five. Okay. Because uh, after two minutes more, two okay. three minutes more. Let me know when when do I speak? Sure, sure. So now is interaction time. If anybody would like to say anything, feel free. Ajin bhai, I wanted to share some testimonies if I could. Oh, testimony, Christina, we can share later. Not just okay. we don't have time, no. <laughs> welcome, welcome, everyone. Thank you. Nice to see you all. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Anita. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Sister Tristan. Yeah. Yes. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, Father. Good morning, Father Joseph. Good, good morning, morning, Father. This is Eric from Chennai. We're all saying good morning. From, good. from Chennai, right? Make sure that yes, the plug Father. is there, right, Father? Very good. How are you? Blessed. Hello? Very blessed. A little tired, but blessed. <laughs> List yeah. it's it's one thirty in the morning here. Wow, that's amazing. Hello, good morning to everyone. I am Sister Vimala from Varanasi. Oh, lovely sister. Sister, Thank another you. religious Thank sister. You. Oh, you're hearing it, right? Good, mm -hmm. good. I'm glad. Okay. Welcome, sister. Yeah, so you, you can help me interpret too. I got you. Glad. Hello, Sir Lankal. Sir Lankal has joined. Father. Yeah. Cyril as well? Yeah, here is he. Cyril! Unmute, unmute, uncle. He's muted. Cyril is muted. Yeah. Hello. Nice to see you. Hello, my brother. Hello. How are you? Fine, fine. You know, we are all so excited that you and the team are joining us. Yes, we are excited as well. Thank you for having us. <laughs> yeah, Cyril John is, by the way, fellas, just so you know, um, he is um, from uh, Karis and Ikris. Uh, he is the, the head Renault. intercessor uh, for the world, wow. for the charismatic Renault. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, so he he's, busy, he's amazing busy. and he works out of the Vatican and India. Oh, wow. Yeah. So he was the one who invited us through, through uh, obviously, my boy, Ajin. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you for joining yeah, us. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you, the team. All of you. Thank you. Yeah. He's saying thank you to everybody. Okay. So if you've never been thanked by anybody from the Vatican, this is their time. <laughs> you, you got thanked way earlier than I did in my life. Trust me. <laughs> Are they all Spanish-speaking, Father? Uh, they we speak English, Spanish, and street. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of French in there too. Yeah. Yes, everybody well, speaks so. Spanish and English. Okay, great. If Ajin wants, we can sing in Spanish too. Yeah. Alabare. Alabare. I learned that from Vatican. Real John. <laughs> he learned it from the Vatican. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they always sing. They always sing Alabare. He said yeah. they always sing Alabare at the Vatican. <laughs> That's so funny. It's only like 100 years old. Senior. Yeah. <laughs> so actually 53, right? 53, yeah. No. Yeah. No, no, it's up. Yes. Very good. So, Father, we'll begin. Uh, Renan was coordinating this event. Renan is from YU4C Goa. I'll show you Renan. Okay. Yeah. Here is he. <laughs> All right. Renan, Hi, how are you? Fine, Father. How are you? All right. Blessed, blessed. Praise God, Father. Amen. Yes, Renan, we can begin. Okay. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I lost the right. Praise the Lord. Uh, 
Hello, praise the Lord. Dear Good friends, morning. I'm actually... Hi. See. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm extremely happy to see all of you all this morning. As you know, this, this Empower program build up the present leaders as well as the upcoming leaders. And all the youth in India, we, we build them up to be leaders for Christ. So I want to thank, I want to thank and congratulate all of you all for joining us today. I want to thank also the, the regional youth teachers, all the priests, as well as, well as the nuns who are youth directors who have sent their youth. As, oh, some of you all must, might be joining us. I want to congratulate all of you. So thank you all of you. I want to thank all of all of you for joining us. And do have a blessed Empower program, the international edition. Thank you and God bless. International edition of the program. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you, Renan, for that lovely introduction. So uh, let me introduce Father Joseph Espailat too. He was the main speaker for Kairos 2019, uh, the Indian Youth Day, as we famously and infamously call it out here. And we, are, we were so privileged and honored to have him on board with us last year. And all the youth literally loved him. And uh, he readily agreed, although the time is not very suitable, but uh, it's 1.30 a.m. in the morning and he has two more events, I suppose, tomorrow morning, like morning for him. Now we are in the morning. <laughs> it's already Sunday over here, but uh, that's Sunday over there, but it's 1.30 a.m. in the morning. So we want to bless and we want to pray, Father, and we are so excited and thrilled and pumped to welcome Father to India and youth from... Uh, many countries have joined us as of now. I can see you from India. Uh, Zimbabwe, uh, Kuwait, Zimbabwe, and, uh, Kuwait, Kenya, and uh, so many other. Uh, if I have forgotten, uh, we are expecting youth, uh, youth from 10 plus countries to join us. So we want to welcome all of you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And also, I want to welcome the Hispanic Catholic Youth Band, Catholic Charismatic Youth Band from. Uh, New York Archdiocese, uh, they were sounding super when we were doing the sound check. Some of you missed it, some of you heard it, you heard them, and we are so excited to welcome all of you. So I'm going to mute all of you now, and even Father is going to get muted. He's uh, going to so, mute us now, Rani. Yeah, uh, just a moment. Yeah, so Father just unmute and the Zoom platform is yours. Mm -hmm. So we can all clap and welcome Father. Ooh. All right. Very good. Excellent. So uh, we're going to begin with a little uh, praise and worship. Amen. Amen. Excellent. All right. So uh, I welcome in a very special way uh, a lot of the young people that I minister and work with. And I'm really, really honored uh, to be ministering with a, a, a powerful group from New York. Uh, one of the main groups here, which is called Agnus Dei, um, and you can check them out on all the platforms. I'll tell you a little about that later, as well as a new new ministry that rose today, actually, while we were praying together, and their name is Duo Christi. So we would like to welcome the old Agnus Dei and the new Duo Christi, uh, and we're going to worship and praise together. So take it away, Fernando. Lead us, brother. Praise and glory to God. First thing I want to start off with, and we want to ask the Lord to open the eyes of our hearts. We're going to ask that this is a very classic. I know it's all over the world. I hope you guys know it. To join me in singing along, asking the Lord to open the eyes of our hearts so we can understand what he has in store for us, what message he has to bring to us. And yeah, so we could be open for whatever he has for us. Um, so I'm going to ask you guys if, you're, if it's possible. Uh, if it's not, I understand. If it's possible, you could get up on your feet. We could clap along. We can use our hands and we could clap along. Um, worship and glorify God together in song and with our bodies, okay? Um, we can dance, we can glorify God, dance and we glorify God by singing, by praising, by worshiping, amen? Um, and without further ado, let's start worshiping, amen? You ready, Josh? Here we go. You ready, Please. girls? All right, here we go. I 
taste and see the sweetest of love. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves. When my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Tell the Holy Spirit, you're welcome. this place of blood, this place, and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. nothing worth more that could ever come close. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living home. Tell me your presence, Lord. Your presence. Say those words with me. And I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves, of the sweetest of loves. When my heart becomes free, when my heart becomes free, and my shame is undone, and then my shame is undone. Get it out, your presence, Lord, your presence, Lord. Raise those hands up high and tell them, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Sing it out to him. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what I Your presence fall upon our face. Let your presence fall upon our hearts right now, Lord God. We need you. We need you to guide us, Lord God. Come take your place in our hearts, Holy Spirit. Third person of the Holy Trinity. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become, Let us become more aware of your presence. Become aware of his presence. Let us experience Holy Spirit. the glory of your goodness. Let us become
for his entrance. That'd be great yes. if you got a round of applause. Amen, amen. Let's welcome him. Yes. Praise and now that we received that presence, we and we started off worshiping. How about we continue worshiping? How about we continue giving him glory and telling him that he is great? Um, and I want us to sing this song called I Got Is Greater. Um, it's very easy. I'm going to try to give it to you. If you can sing along, if not, just wait, worship him with your hands up. Worship him with your hands. Just, Worship with your body. Just don't let yourself do nothing. Worship and glorify God. Amen. amen. So I want you, the song is very simple. It says, our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. It seems like a lot of words, but it's, it's catchy to, to catch up. It's all right. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome in power, our God, our God. Girls, you ready? You ready? Yeah. Josh, you ready? <laughs> oh, my phone's on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Amen. Our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, 
awesome in power, I got, I got, I got is greater, I got is stronger, got you higher than any other, I got is healer, awesome in power, I got, I got, I'm gonna say that again. Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome power, our God, our God, if our God is for us. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? Oh, again, then what can stand against? Got a round of applause. Amen. Amen. Awesome. God is good. All the time. All, All the, the time. time. God is God good. God is good. Amen. 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 Yeah. Ajin, one more, or, or do we uh or do we jump into it? What do you think? One more or or do we go? Feel free, Father. Now the Zoom platform is yours. You can do anything. You have time. You want to do one more? Sure, why not? One more. Let's do one more. Yeah, yeah. Feel free. Yeah, I, Rosemary seems to like it, right, Rosemary? <laughs> yeah, she's sticking up her finger. She says one more, one more. All right, so let's do one more. <laughs> All right, amen, amen. Very good. Let's do one more then. How many of you believe amen. God's grace is enough? Amen. Raise your hands up. Woo we all know the song. Amen. Matt Mahar. Amen. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So let's sing along. I want you to clap along with me. You know the drill. Everybody's worshiping. We don't know the song. Let's clap along, but let's move it. Let's move it, all right? <laughs> all right, let's go.
time your grace, for your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. Amen, amen. Excellent. Thank Amen. you so much, Fernando, Josh from Agnus Day Ministry, and thank you so much, Aurelin and Maria Isabel, for joining us. And they will be back a little later. Uh, they're they're going to be here interceding with us. And at this moment, we're going to go into the first part of our presentation. So um, I am going to uh, take off the headphones so that this way uh, I'll be able to speak clearly. And if uh, Renan or Rosemary or Ajin want to speak to me, I just signal to the head so I can put uh, the headphones back on, all right? Because <laughs> I won't be able to, uh, I won't be able to, um, to hear you any other way. So, um, Ronnie, we ready? Okay. Okay, yeah, so we're ready to go to the slides, yes. All right. So, um, my beautiful leaders from India and from around the world, welcome, welcome to New York. You never thought you would make it to New York. Here you are. You are actually in Hackensack, New Jersey. So you're not in New York fully, but you're in the suburbs of New York, okay? Uh, and actually... Uh, we are uh, in Rooted Studios, so I'd like to thank um, my uh, one of my spiritual sons, Ronnie, for opening up his studio for us tonight. Ronnie just came back uh, from Florida. Uh, he was shooting something down there, uh, and if you've ever heard of um, uh, an artist by the name of Pitbull, uh, anybody ever hear of Pitbull? You hear of Pitbull? So he does the sound uh, for Pitbull, okay? Um, so he's a, he's a, an amazing uh, uh, artist as well, and he's behind uh, the uh, the scenes doing all of the technical stuff uh, today. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, as we do our presentation, uh, we're going to be talking about being true witnesses. Okay, being true witnesses, and you can put up the uh, the presentation there so that everybody can see, and we can share with you. All right, true leaders are true witnesses, okay? That's what it is. So why you foresee, okay, there you are. True leaders are true witnesses. And we need to talk about the context, okay? Uh, and so as we begin, I know we prayed already, but I would also like to pray at this moment. So in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And I'd like to ask our Blessed Mother, to be with us and to uh, guide us and accompany us during this time. Mary, Mother Mary, we ask you to walk with us. Mother Mary, we ask you to be with us. And we ask you to open up our minds and hearts so that we can be true witnesses of your son, Jesus Christ. And this is why we turn to you with childlike confidence. And we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We're not there yet, guys. Amen. Uh, so, we ready? Yep. Okay. Just hit play there. Yeah. So, true leaders are true witnesses. So, af after giving you the context, okay, uh, of where we are, after giving you the context, I'd like to share a video with all of you at this moment. And this video uh, means, uh, means a lot to me because every year I try to determine uh, what it is that is going on in the world. And obviously we know what's going on right now with COVID. Um, but I would like to actually uh, share this video, which is from YouTube. And it's called... Um, Google year in search. And so you can leave it on right there, guys. Don't move that then. And hopefully you'll be able to hear it. Please check out this video.
Let it go. Yeah, he's doing it, Father, I think. All right, there we go. Just let it play. Thanks. So, more than ever, my brothers and sisters, we need genuine witnesses. All right? We need witnesses. Can everybody hear me? We're good? Yes? I yes, hope Father. they're hearing me right now. Yes, Father. Okay, good. So, more than ever, we need real genuine witnesses and um the funny thing is that this year 2019 the search in google was for heroes right they were looking for heroes um what are superheroes um sheroes right all of these these things that the world was looking for before the pandemic hit my sisters and brothers in christ now i find it to be quite fascinating Right? I find it to be quite interesting that the world was looking for heroes. They were looking for heroes. And, and I don't know about you, but for the past couple of years, I've been looking and, and studying you know, this you know, Google search and, and what Google is looking for. Because people are turning to a computer to actually ask the computer for you know, what is a hero and, 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 and crazy stuff like, how do you kiss? right? And, and, and how do you knit? Or how do you do this? Or how do you do that? And how many times do we turn my sisters and brothers to the internet or we turn to Google for answers? And the reality is that we need to turn to God, right? We need to turn to Jesus Christ. We need to turn to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And that is what we are called to do, especially as leaders especially as men and women in faith, especially as those who follow and love Jesus Christ. So more than ever, we need witnesses. We need genuine, genuine witnesses. And up on the screen, you know, uh, I'm going to be uh, putting up a couple of images there of 
uh, witnesses that we can look towards. And I'm going to put up some of my favorite. And I'm going to run through the stories really, really quickly, okay, about them. So the first one, um, you may not know him, is St. Da David Galvan. St. David Galvan is one of the Mexican martyrs, okay? And St. David Galvan uh, is an awesome saint. And I don't know, I can't see it here, Ronnie, right now. Uh, do I have to click on it? There you go. All right, awesome. So San David Galvan, who's the first saint I'm putting up here, uh, he was a troublemaker. Now, I don't know if some of you there, I don't know, some of you who are novices, some of my young sisters or junior sisters um, who are with us, maybe seminarians, um, this story is for you. But it's quite fascinating because St. David Galvan, uh, he left the seminary for some time. And when he left the seminary, he actually started dating a girl. And he was dating this French girl. And as he was dating her, he caught her dancing with somebody else. So what did St. David Galvan do? As any good person would, right? He took a bottle and he cracked it over the head. He hit him over the head and, and, and he went to jail. So this saint went to jail, okay, for hitting a guy over, a head, over the head because he was dancing with his girl. Now, St. David Galvan, when he came out of jail, he repented and he was really sorry for what he had done. Uh, but he felt God still calling him. He felt God still calling him to be a priest. And so what did St. Ga David Galvan do? St. David Galvan went back to the seminary. Now the rector of the seminary was like, oh no, we cannot take this guy. This guy is trouble. There's no way he's going to become a priest. And, and yet they trusted. And they said, you know what? Um, we'll take him back. We'll give it a shot. And, and let's see. Let's try and he and he and he's, he was successful at it, right? He got ordained. He became a priest. Not only that, my sisters and my brothers in Christ, not only did he become a priest, but they invited him to come back to teach at the seminary. Now, how crazy is that, right? And he's a saint of the church. Many people would say he could never become a saint. And yet God believed in him. God called him and he became a true, true witness. The second person that I like to talk about uh, for us uh, during this moment is, I don't know if it's moving, it's not moving. Here we go. We're live and direct people. It's not moving. Yeah, there it is. It's St. Um, Isaac Jogues, all right? St. Isaac Jogues, he's Ignatian, obviously of the Society of Jesus. And uh, many of you uh, in India may not know the story of St. Isaac Jokes. So I'm going to tell you the story of this American saint, right? St. Isaac Jokes, uh, interesting, was a priest and he was ministering to the Native Americans who were here uh, in North America. And it's quite fascinating because St. Isaac Jokes actually was ministering to the Lily of the Mohawks. St. Kateri Tekawitha, and they weren't too thrilled that he was actually converting people, that he was actually bringing people to the faith. So what did they do? They were cannibals, and they actually bit off the thumbs and his index fingers. They gnawed it off, right? They ate his fingers so that he would not be able to celebrate Mass, so that he would not be able to hold the Eucharist. And he's one of my heroes uh, because um, he went back to Europe. He went back dejected. And when he went back to Europe dejected, what happened was that the Pope said to him, listen, you can go back and, and still celebrate Mass. Um, and, and he did that. And St. Isaac Jogues was like, I can go back? And he said, they're probably going to kill you. And he's like, it doesn't matter. I want to be a witness. So it's all about being a witness, right? And he came back to the United States. And eventually he died for his faith. He was a martyr. The next person you all know in India, I hope you know her. Because if you don't know her, you're going to be in real big trouble. Okay? But the person I'm talking about is St. Teresa of Calcutta. 
And I just noticed I still have these silly headphones on, but I'll keep them on because they kind of feel cool around my head right now. All right. So anyways, St. Teresa of Calcutta, um, Gonja Agnes Boyju. We know her story. India, you know her story very, very well, right? She was a nun and, and God gave her a call within a call. And she responded to that, right? She heard the voice of God speak to her and she answered yes. And then one of my most favorite saints of all time is St. John the Baptist. St. John the Baptist was beheaded. They lopped off his head. I'm not going to speak more about his life because we know a lot about it from the scriptures, from the gospels, right? And, and he gave up his life for the Lord. Now, why am I telling you the story of these four amazing saints? You no, know, St. David Galvan. I'm talking about um, St. Isaac Jokes, St. Teresa of Calcutta, and St. John the Baptist, because they were genuine witnesses in their day. And that is what you are called to do, my brothers and sisters. You are called to be the modern day witnesses. And if we can be honest right now, if we can be totally, totally blunt, my sisters and brothers in Christ, the church needs you right now. Now is when the church needs you. Why? Especially in the midst of the scandals especially in the midst of everything that's going on. God is calling us to be holy. God is calling us to be set apart. And in the middle of this COVID crisis, my sisters and brothers in Christ, we need to be saints. I, I've said this to my young people, and I, and I want to continue to say this. These right now are saint-making times. Amen? They're saint-making times. And this is what the Lord is calling us to be. The Lord is calling us to be holy. And these men and women were not afraid to be holy. And what's the problem? The problem is that there is no fire in the evangelization process or preaching. There's a lot of people that when they preach, that when they talk, they're like, Jesus loves you. And Jesus is good. And, 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 and you know what? I need to see that fire in the belly. I really need to know that you know Jesus Christ. And we need to be true witnesses. And, and people are going to call you crazy. Oh, trust me. They think I'm crazy because I got a little nervous tick. You know, you know what I'm saying? You don't know about that, India. All right. But what I'm saying is that I have this fire in the belly because I know that I have a living God who loves me, who has called me, and that he will provide everything that I need, especially now. India, you are the now of God. Mumbai, you are the now of God. Africa, you are the now of God. Middle East, you are the now of God. United States, you are the now of God. I had the great privilege of traveling to Panama. And some of the young people are here who were actually in Panama with me. And they're interceding right now. For you, they're interceding for me, they're interceding for all of us. And, and I'll never forget when Pope Francis said this in Panama. It was amazing because it shook me to the core. And he said this, and you read it there, dear young people, you are not the future. You are not the future, but you are the now of God. And God invites you and he calls you in your communities, in your cities, to go out and find your grandparents, find your elders, to stand up with them and to speak out and to realize the dream that the Lord has dreamed for you. How many of us really believe that? I, I fight all the time with people at my parish, with people in the charismatic renewal. You know, it's like, well, let father do it or let sister do it. And, and, and yes, we have our part, we have our role, but you, my young people, are the now of God. I really get upset when I hear, oh, yes, young people are the future. Young people are not the future. Young people are the now because you are living now. You are breathing now. You are serving now. And this is what we need for you to become these true witnesses here and now. I'd like to present this next video to you. And it's kind of shocking. And, and one, of my, one of my boys who's here, Josh, right? One of my fellas, uh, he, he's like, oh, man, you're going to show them this video, Father? And I'm like, yes, I am. And maybe 
You've never seen this before, but I want to show you what a Christian, what a Catholic Christian should be doing today. And I'm going to show you a video of this, these famous comedians. They're called Penn and Teller. Maybe you've never heard of them, India, but let me tell you this. Okay, they are atheists to the core. Okay, especially, all right, Penn. He doesn't believe in God, and he doesn't like religion, and he's very, very, very open about it. But something happened to him, and I want you to witness this video, and then you tell me what you think. So let's pay attention. Father, the audio is not there. Can you fix that? You don't have the audio? No, Father. No. Ronnie, they don't have the audio to that one. All right, sorry about that. We'll get it to you. We'll try it again. Are you hearing me so far okay, Ajin? Yes, Father. Okay. Okay, good. Because this is the first time. I don't know what they're showing or what they're doing. That's why I'm letting them do it. <laughs> I'm a measly priest. That's all. Yes, Father. They I do what I can. <laughs> amen. Amen. So, the, so the the video I I hope um, impacts you and touches you on what it means to be a witness. Sometimes we think that because they're atheists or because they're non-believers, and I had the privilege of of visiting India, and I learned so much. No, uh, in my in my few days, only what four or five days, right, Ajin, uh, in in New Delhi. No, uh, at the beautiful retreat house that you have there. But Ajin and Cyril John and Bishop uh, Callis, no, they they um they 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 explained to me the the situation of the government and and the religion of the country and all of the things that were there. So sometimes we think, well, they're a different religion, or they're not going to understand, or they're not going to relate. It's for us to treat people with love, to treat people with respect, to treat people with the dignity that they have as sons and daughters of God. And when we do that, amazing things happen. Okay. Um, so do we have the video, fellas, or no? All right. They're going to put it on. Uh, Ronnie, if you can father this, if you can communicate this, he needs to select share computer audio option. Audio option. We got it. Got yeah. it. All right. Uh -huh. Ronnie's going to share his password with the whole world. Now. <laughs> no, you won't see. You won't see. Uh -huh. <laughs> you see charts. Oh, that's it. Okay. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> oh, oh, he put the wrong one in. On he was. Uh, Father, you are, we are not able to hear you. Father? Rodney, can you fix that? Not able to hear. Mm. Yeah, still the audio is not there. Lost both audio. Yeah. Rodney can't hear that. I think only father can hear. Father, say something. Yes, check, check. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. No, we can hear you. Okay. No worries, no worries. Uh, okay. But we were still not well, able you know to what? hear. Then let's, let's just skip the video, Rodney. That's fine. Yeah, Father, we can we can we can see the video without the audio. You can just explain. Okay, yeah. So let me let, let me do that instead. Okay. Yeah. Um and, and and it's basically okay. So long story short, like I was saying, um uh you can go to the next slide over then, Ronnie. Go go to the next slide and just leave it there. All right. Um 
and hit play from there. Thank you, Rodney. So my brothers and sisters, the point is this, 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 this atheist pen, he talks about how after the show, there's a gentleman waiting outside. And a long story short, this gentleman gives him a pocket Bible right? He has his little pocket Bible and he writes his, his name and his numbers. And, and he says to him, listen, he goes, Penn, I know that you don't believe in God. He goes, I know you're an atheist, but I want you to have this gift. And, and, and Penn, as he's telling the story of this encounter with a Christian who handed him a pocket Bible with his name and his numbers, he said, you know, he was a genuine man. He, kept, he keeps on saying it in the video. And you see this atheist just recognize the goodness of this human being. And, and we don't know who it is. He, he never says his name. But, but he keeps on saying, he was a good man. He was a really good man. And he says, look, I don't believe in God. But I do know that the person who gave me this was a good man. And, 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 and at the end of the video, you even see like almost him kind of doubting uh, in the sense of, you know, maybe there is a God. And, 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 and a lot of my friends that have seen the video say, I think he's close, closer than we think. And many times we write people off. Why? Well, they don't look like me or, or, or they don't pray like me or they don't act like me or, or maybe they don't believe what I believe. But guess what? Love conquers everything. Amen? Love has the final say. And my brothers and sisters in Christ, um, the reality is that if we were to treat each other with love, with respect, with dignity, people will see the innate goodness in each and every single one of us. Martin Luther King Jr., who is a big person for us, here in the United States of America, I ran into this quote. He said this, everybody can be great because everybody can serve. All right, everybody can be great because everybody can serve. You don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject and your verb agree to serve. You only need a heart full of grace, a soul generated by love. And that's the point for us my sisters and brothers in Christ, do we have a heart full of grace? Do we have a soul that is generated by love? As we move into the next slide, don't just tell people what to do. We need to show people what to do. And there's this beautiful image here of Jesus, right? Carrying the cross. If you've ever seen the movie, The Passion of the Christ, right? There's this one scene after our Lord, you know, gets beaten uh, right before he, he, he takes the cross to go to Calvary, right? He comes out and, and he embraces the cross, right? He embraces the cross and he's like hugging it. And the centurion soldier, the Roman soldier just looks at him and, and he's like, like, what are you doing? And Jesus sort of at that moment, like without even speaking, just, just hugs the cross and says like, oh, I got to do this. This is what I'm called to do. And what I love about our Lord, what I love about our Savior is that he wasn't just talking about it. He was about it. He walked the walk. Jesus did it with his very life. He gave up his life for you and for me, my sisters and brothers. And that's the good news. Next slide, Ronnie. So St. Paul says, 1 Corinthians 11, 1, very famous line. A lot of you may know it, right? Be imitators of me as I am an imitator of Christ. Be imitators of me as I am an imitator of Christ. And we know tradition tells us that St. Paul was beheaded, right? So just think about this. Here he was, poor St. Paul. We read in his letters, he was shipwrecked. He was imprisoned. He was beaten. He was taken out under the cover of night, and then eventually he lost his head. They beheaded him, and he lost his life. But guess what? For to me, life is Christ, and death is gain. This is what St. Paul says to us. Are you, my brothers and sisters, are you leaders of 
the world right now, leaders of our church, willing to sacrifice it all. You know, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I've always told you the truth. Today, we had a big day at my parish. Uh, as the director, the spiritual director of the charismatic renewal, you no, know, I was out in the sun. This is why I look like a lobster right now. Don't make fun of me. Don't laugh. That's bad. Very bad. Okay. But I look like a lobster. Why? Because I was in the sun and, and I was leading my people in praise and worship. And for the greater glory of God, we raised $50,000 today. I'm going to repeat that again. We raised $50,000 thousand dollars through the generosity of my people because the charismatic center was closed we've been closed for six months today was the great reopening and i said to the people online hey we need your help and I, we got done at 10 10 30 here at night we were exhausted we went to a store to buy food and it took forever to get all right, and then we're finally here, 1.30 in the morning. Right now, it's 2.30 in the morning. And I could have been like, oh, no, you know what? I'm tired. I'm done. I have to sleep. As, as my, my brother, Ajin, said, I have to be on another call, on another Zoom call at 11 o'clock in the morning with Mexico. And then I have mass for my community at 3 o'clock. And then I have to be with my youth group right after that. Be imitators of me, the Lord says. And, and I thank Ajin for the opportunity because I know Ajin felt bad. Because he goes, oh, Father, maybe we can change the time. I said, Ajin, you sent out the email. Let it be. And I will make a sacrifice. Are we willing to sacrifice? Are we willing to lay down our lives for the Lord? And my brothers and sisters, by no stretch of the imagination, am I a saint? Because the people around me are amazing. They're the ones helping me. Ronnie just came from Florida today. No, poor Fernando had a birthday yesterday. And I don't, I don't think he's still recovered from that, right? <laughs> I mean, we, we have, I'm just shouting him out right now internationally, right? We have, you know, 14, 15 year old, you know, leaders from my parish here. We're all tired. But guess what? They're making the sacrifice with me. And I'm grateful for that. Why? Because I am not alone. Amen? Because I have these brothers and these sisters with me who are willing to be these modern day witnesses. Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. If we were to be able to say that, I mean, how much did it take for St. Paul to be able to say that to his people, to the people of Corinth? And how many of us seriously online right now can say, hey, imitate me. Be like me. I mean, that's a challenge. I don't know about you, but to me, and I remember the first time I was able to say that to my community. I remember the first time I was able to say that to St. Peter's Church in Yonkers. And I said to my people, be like me right now. And, and, and it meant so much at that moment as a pastor. It was the first time I was a pastor. And the people rallied behind me at that time. And, and it was very meaningful because as a community, as a church, we began to fly. My future sisters who are with us, pay attention to that. When they see you, sister, future sister, will they see Christ? My future priests, my seminarians, when people look at you, will they be able to see Jesus? My youth ministers who are with us, when people look at you, can they see the face of Christ? Next slide, Ronnie. So knowing all of this, how can we be true witnesses and true superheroes? Next slide. And I'm going to basically take a pause here, and then we'll come back to it. But I just want to preface the next part of our talk, okay? I laid down the need. I laid down the foundation. And then now, in the second part of our talk, I am going to talk about how we can become these witnesses. And I'm going to give you several points. And they're not my points. I'm not that smart. Trust me, I'm not. Okay, this is why I have Holy Mother Church, because Holy Mother Church guides me. And I have Pope Francis, who's the man, okay? And Pope Francis, in Christus Vivit, this document, in 2018, he called the Synod of Bishops 
uh, on young people, the faith and vocational discernment. And he gives us in Christus Vivi some pointers for us and in Evangelii Gaudium. So in the second half, my sisters and brothers in Christ, what I'd like to do, I know the nuns are going to get all excited now and the seminarians are going to be like, oh, wow, church documents. Okay, but I'm going to try to explain it in an easy way that everybody knows what Pope Francis is talking about. And I'm going to talk about these points on how we can be the witnesses uh, for the world that so desperately needs heroes. Google 2019 was searching for heroes. The world needs heroes like you and me now, not tomorrow, now. Be imitators of me as I am, am an imitator of Christ. You are the now of God. And in the second half, we're gonna spend that time opening that, breaking that open and sharing that with each other. So I'm gonna invite Fernando to come back in. I'm gonna invite the girls to come back in and to um, help us to reflect on that, help us to pray with that. Ajin, are we doing all right? We good? Yes, Father, perfect. All right, everybody yeah. good? Give me thumbs up if everybody's good. Everybody's okay? Is this making sense, yes or no? Yes, no? Yes. Go like this, uh, yes, 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 okay. Good, come, come. All right. surrender all to God, get, get everything we have, all of us, all, all that, all that belongs to us, all that we are, some of us are getting ready to take that next step, to give it all to God, to give it all to the community, the seminarians and novices, and those that who already have taken that decision to be priests, to be nuns, who have already given it all, let's renew that. Tell 
on you surrender it all to them. I surrender. I surrender. Everything, 
everything of you, I surrender. Every single last drop of your perfume, I surrender. I sing it out to them, I surrender, yeah. Oh, I surrender, I surrender all. Tell them I, oh, I surrender, I surrender all. Say that one more time. One last time, one last time, tell him I surrender. I surrender, I surrender all. As we pray, I get this, this image of, of David um, when, when he was called out and how inadequate so many people felt that he was. Like so many people, I, I believe that like he began to believe himself that he was inadequate. And, and, and as what we know about King David is that David was a worshiper. That, that later on, as we hear about him being in front of the tabernacle of the Lord, how he, he danced and how he worshiped. But something specific, when, 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 when he was called out, that so many people ruled him out. And, and I get the feeling that some of us relate to David in this moment, that we don't feel adequate to serve God in the capacity that he's called us to. But, but the beauty was that David, even though he himself probably didn't understand what God was calling him to do, he still submitted to him. And, and that song, it, it just, it's just perfect because what God doesn't call us, he doesn't call us to perfection, he calls us to surrender. And in that surrender, his glory is made whole. So, so if, if that is you tonight, if you feel that you are not adequate enough to serve God, this is a word for you that God says that you are not adequate, but he is that you might not be able to do it, but he will. So that adequacy does not come from what we can do, but what he can do through us. And if it's surrender that we need, and if we believe that God is all powerful, all knowing, and all being, that then we just have to give up. A lot of people think that winning is effort, but it's not a surrender. It's giving up. So Lord, tonight we give up to you. Lord, we, we, we connect with our brothers and sisters across the world in this moment, Lord, in a surrender of your victory, Lord. And, and, and we might not feel ready to serve you, Lord, but we pray in this moment for, for a new grace, Lord, an interrupting grace of what we think needs to be for what you call us to be, Lord. Lord, we, we just want to surrender to you in this moment, Lord, just like David did. David did it at a young age, Lord, and, and some of us might not be as young as we'd like to be. Amen. Lord, but Lord, your, your grace supersedes age, Lord. Your call supersedes our effort, Lord. So we praise you for this, Lord. We want to surrender in this moment. And, and wherever you are, we're going to invite you into this worship of just absolute surrender. And it doesn't matter if you feel inadequate. Listen to me, my brother and sister, that your adequacy does not have anything to do with God's goodness. No matter how much you fail, God still calls you. So, Lord, we, we surrender in this moment. Lord. We surrender all to you, Lord. In your own words, in your own worship, wherever you are, let's give God, God, God our best worship. God, our best worship. Our best worship. Our best worship. Our best worship. Every, every single bit of, of us, Lord God. Every, every single bit of us, Lord God. Deserve all of our everything. All of our worship. All of our all of our kindness. We exalt you. We exalt you. We exalt you. We exalt you. We Because you love us before we love ourselves, Lord God. Because you've given us everything that you have. We worship you for who you are in our life, not because of what you give us, not because of what you do, just because of who you are. You are the Lord, the Lord, God, you, you are everything. But you were ready, God. You were ready. Call us, Lord God, even when we believe that we are failures, Lord God. We believe that we are imperfect, Lord God. You see the perfection that you created in this Lord. And we worship you, we glorify you, Lord God. Because you see that we are amazing even when we don't see ourselves as amazing. Oh, you are Alpha, you are Omega, Lord. All knowing, all powerful. And we give every single day, every single drop, every sing, everything that is us, Lord. Everything and nothing less. Oh, my best. My all. You deserve my 
every breath. You deserve my every breath. My life, my song, everything and nothing left, everything and nothing left. Oh, my best, my all. You deserve my every breath.
sorry. And I'm sorry when I've come with my agenda. I'm sorry when I forgot that you're enough. Take me back to where we started. Oh, I open up my heart to you. Caught up. Caught up. I just want you to say that. And I just want you. And nothing else. And nothing else. No. Nothing else will do. And I just Tell want Jesus. you. Tell him. And nothing else. Nothing else. And nothing else. No. you don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do I just want you tell him I just want you let's sing that again and I just want you nothing else and nothing else nothing else Nothing else, no, nothing else will do. Nothing else will do. And I just want you. And nothing else, nothing else. And nothing else, no, nothing else will do. Oh, I just want you. And nothing else. Nothing else, no, nothing else will do. And I just want you. And nothing else, nothing else, no, nothing else will do. Last time, oh, I'm caught up in your presence. Jesus. I just want to sit here at your feet. Thank you, Lord. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I want me. I never want to leave. I'm not here for blessings. No, I'm not here for blessings. 
Jesus, you don't owe me anything. And more than anything that you can do, I just want you. Praise up to you, God. Serve of all the glory, all the praise, all the worship. It all belongs to you. All we want you, Lord. None of the work, none of the gold, none of the treasures in the world satisfies as much as you satisfy us, Lord. You complete us. We are meant to be with you. Since our creation, Lord God, you marked yourself in our souls. You marked us all yourself in our hearts. And all we want to do is be with you. We can say that one more time. I think so, right? I just want you. Why not? Let's say that again. I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just, I just want you, tell him, nothing else, nothing else, no. Nothing else will do more time. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else. No. Nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else. No. Nothing else will do. Amen. God is good. All the time. All the time. All the time. All the time. God is good. God is good. Amen. Whoa. Um. I don't know about you, India, but I, I hope uh, you are praying along with us and worshiping with us. Amen? Amen. Awesome. Um, so, Ajin, how much time do I have left here? Oh, uh, yes, Father. Just let me just check. I got lost I... in the wonder of our ship. Now it's 12.36, no? Brennan? Whatever Almost you time. say. Renan? I think he got Just lost in worship too. <laughs> That's not a bad no thing. Way. So almost close to an hour. Yeah. Till 1.30 we can so go. So bad no? for your time. <laughs> yeah, Father, yeah. you can take another 40 minutes. Okay. So uh, we'll, we'll finish up this second part then. Uh, yeah. Ronnie, looking here? That's where I'm at. All right. So, um, whew, God is great. Amen. Amen. When I say God is great, I want you to say, don't hesitate. God is great. Don't hesitate. God is great. Don't hesitate. Don't hesitate. That's right. You see my boy Rodney on fire right there. Thank you for moving my car, Rodney, before we got towed. See, you don't have these problems in India. We, we, uh, we needed to move our vehicles and, and, and he ran out. Um, so, my brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, let's continue with this second part. It's going to be seven points, okay, on how we can become true witnesses. So, India, uh, the world, all of the youth leaders from around the world who are with us, joining us from all over, uh, you could type it in there. Uh, Jean will tell me later uh, what you're typing in and where you're from. But Pope Francis sort of lays down a foundation for us. He, he lays down the groundwork of how we can become these true witnesses. I told you, let me share with you the document here, um, Christus Vivi. And Rani, I'm going to trust you uh, to, to 
hit me up with the slides instead of me doing it. Uh, I'll trust you guys on your end. So the, 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 um, the document is this. It's Christus vivit, okay? And uh, it means uh, Christ is alive. Um, and, and it's funny because he mentions in here in chapter 3, you are the now of God. And the points that I'm going to be taking are going to be from Christus Vivi and from Evangelii Gaudium. Okay, these two amazing, amazing documents. So um, the joy of the gospel and Christ is alive. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't have these documents, if you haven't read them, and, and especially if you've never read a church document in your life, I strongly, strongly suggest Evangelii Gaudium, the joy of the gospel. This is such a great read. Um, and then I would recommend Christus Vivit second. Um, I'm going to use the cajon here uh, to leave my books. So key factors to how we can become true witnesses. The very first point is, my brothers and sisters, that we need to strive for holiness. Okay? It's what we've been doing tonight uh, here. We're saying tonight, sorry, guys. I know it's morning. But right now it's three o'clock in the morning and we haven't gone to sleep yet. So that's why we keep on saying night, uh, even though it's really morning. So the first point is we need to strive for holiness. We have to strive to, 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 to look for God, to long for God, to be with God. Uh, I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else will do. I just want you, right? That's what we were doing. That's what we were saying. That's what we were praising. Uh, be holy for God is holy. Uh, we are told, right? First Peter 1, um, 13 to 16. Be holy for God is holy. So my brothers and sisters, if we want to be the modern day heroes, if we want to be the superheroes, we need to strive for holiness. That's the first point. Second point, point number two, I'm going to try to go through these a little quicker, is that we need to be evangelizers with spirit. Uh, I know that my brother Cyril John, I don't know if he's still on or not, but I know that he would agree with me on this, right? We have too many people who do not have this energy, do not have this zeal, do not have the passion to preach Christ. I, I, I told my parishioners four years ago, I said, you were Jesus's passion. What is your passion? <sighs> Think about this. You were his passion. Jesus went through his passion, his death and resurrection for you, for me. Jesus was passionately in love with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Passionately in love for you and for me. And how many people will say, Oh, yeah, that's nice, Father. Uh, that, that, that's cool. I mean, why, why else would I be sacrificing? Why else would I be here if, if I wasn't passionate about him? If I wasn't passionate about his church? If I wasn't passionate about the love that he has for me? My brothers and sisters, we have to be evangelizers with spirit. Next slide. Evangelii Gaudium, paragraph 259. Let me repeat that again. Evangelii Gaudium, the joy of the gospel, paragraph 259 says this. <clears throat> Spirit-filled evangelizers means evangelizers fearlessly open to the working of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. I still have the headphones on. I don't know why, but I, I'm going to take them off. Okay? It means at Pentecost, the Spirit made the apostles go forth from themselves and turn them into heralds of God's wondrous deeds, capable of speaking to each person in his or her own language. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit also grants the courage to proclaim the newness of the gospel with boldness. In the Greek, it's parousia, with boldness. So when, when, when the disciples, when the apostles received the power of the Holy Spirit, either in the Gospel of St. John or Acts 2, which we know quite well, right? They received power. They went out. They went out and proclaimed the good news. Acts of the Apostles 1.8, right? And they, 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 they received power from on high. 
And when we receive this power, we're not meant to fizzle out. We're not meant to just say, oh, yeah, that's nice. Thank you, God. No, we're meant to be bold witnesses, bold disciples. And this, my sisters and brothers in Christ, is what we need. Spirit-filled evangelizers. Now, it's funny because a lot of people talk about being missionary disciples, right? And, and, and we've heard this word being thrown about. But Pope Francis in his document, I need you to pay attention. Pope Francis literally says that missionary disciples and spirit-filled evangelizers is the same thing. Whoa. Let me say it again. Missionary disciples and spirit-filled evangelizers are the same. Now, here's my point. Why do we only talk about being missionary disciples? And I'm going to challenge the charismatic renewal. I'm going to challenge my, my brother whom I love dearly, Cyril John, for us to start using these words more. I'm going to challenge you to say, hey, yeah, the missionary discipleship is nice, but guess what? We need to be spirit-filled evangelizers because we cannot be missionary disciples if we don't have the Holy Spirit. And that's what God is calling us to do. They had this new boldness. And every time and place, even listen to the words when it meets with opposition. Let's go on to the next slide. And we'll share this with you here. He continues by saying, let us call upon him today, firmly rooted in prayer. We're in rooted studios, people. I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> rooted in prayer. For without prayer, all of our activity risks being fruitless. And I'm not joking about this, right? Because there's a reason why Ronnie chose the name Rooted Studios. I mean, are you rooted in Jesus or are you rooted in something else? What are you rooted in? Are we rooted in prayer? For without prayer, my brothers and sisters, our, our activity risks being fruitless. And our message empty. Jesus wants evangelizers who proclaim the good news. Not only with words, but here it is. But above all, by a life transfigured by God's presence. Amen? A life transfigured by God's presence. Look, it means nothing to you if you can preach beautifully. If you can preach not nice. If, if, if you, you know, sing amazing. But your life is not transformed. Amen? And if you can't say amen, say ouch. Ouch, right? My sisters and my brothers in Christ, next paragraph. Pope Francis says in paragraph 273, and I want to focus on this a little bit because this is what the questions are going to be at the end. Ajin, I remembered, you said we would need to have questions. So here it is. Evangelii Gaudium 273 says, my mission, this is a beautiful paragraph, man. I really love this paragraph. My mission of being in the heart of the people is not just a part of my life or a badge that I can take off. He says, it is not an extra or just another moment in life. Instead, it is something I cannot uproot for, again, there's the word again, right? From my being without destroying my very self. So my mission of being in the heart of the people is not just a part of my life. It is my life. My priesthood is my life. I, I cannot just take off my priesthood and say, well, guess what? I'm not going to be a priest today. No, I have to be a priest every day. Whether I'm dressed like a priest or not, I need to live that out. I am a mission on this earth, and that is the reason why I am here in this world. We have to regard ourselves as sealed. It's beautiful, the words Pope Francis uses, sealed, even branded, by the mission of bringing light, blessing, enlivening, raising up, healing, and freeing. That's a lot to take in. I know. Sorry, but this is why I'm going to give you homework. And here's your first question, and I'll bring it back up in the end. I know Ajin is probably trying to write it down right now, but I'll have them up for you. How am I bringing light in this world right now? One, how am I blessing? I say this to my young people all the time. They won't let me lie. 
If you know how to curse, you know how to bless. Amen or ouch? If you know how to curse and you're cursing up a storm and you're saying, you know, bleep this and bleep that, then you could also bless. Instead of cursing people, let's start blessing people. How am I blessing people? How am I en enlivening people around me? How am I raising up people in my life? How am I raising myself up? How am I healing people? Yes, yes, we're not going to talk about that tonight. You, my brother, my sister, have the power to heal. And last but not least, how am I freeing? Let's move on quickly to the next one. Three, we need to accompany. We need to listen. Acompañamiento is the Spanish word. Yes, I said it because Pope Francis speaks Spanish. Acompañamiento. Say it at home with me, India. Say it at home. Acompañamiento. One more time. Acompañamiento. Accompany. To listen. Are we accompanying people? Or do I just want to be accompanied all the time? Am I listening? Am I listening first to God? Am I listening to those around me? Next point. Four. We need to have a new love for the sacraments and for sacred scripture. Yes, I'm not going to spend too much time on it. It's pretty much self-explanatory. We need a new love. Amen? We need a new love. Amen? Not an old love. Not, oh yeah, when I was eight years old, I did my first Holy Communion. Each and every single day, a new love for baptism, a new love for the Eucharist, a new love for confirmation, a new love for marriage, a new love for the priesthood, a new love for anointing of the sick, a new love for penance. Do we have that? Do we have a love for the word? Those of us who have been baptized in the spirit, something that I love when I was baptized in the spirit, this may surprise you. I was only baptized in the spirit five years ago. And when I was baptized in the spirit, the first thing I noticed, it was my love for sacred scripture. I just couldn't put it down. I started carrying my Bible around. I'm ashamed to say it. I rarely carried my Bible before. Now I just can't think about leaving home without my Bible. Because I'm in love with the word, which is Jesus. Five. Good liturgy. Yes, I know. India, you're pretty good about this. I have to say, you have, you have pretty good liturgies out there, especially with your bishops. Praise God for all of them that you have there. And, and your cardinal, the cardinal I met in Delhi. You know, how beautiful it was to be able to celebrate Mass. And it's so critical. It's so important for us to have good liturgy. The Mass is a celebration. It's a memorial. It's a banquet. It's a sacrifice. And, and, and I think that we have sort of you know, taking this away. And this is why young people don't understand mass and the liturgy. Uh, they don't get the essence of it, the importance of it. But it's because we kind of have watered it down for them. But if you keep it and you do it well, they will get it. And it's especially if you explain it to them. Six, we need to help young people develop roots. There's the word again. Right? There was a reason for me coming to Rooted Studio, okay? You need roots. Help people, young people develop roots and guard against what he says in Christus Vivit, the masters of manipulation. Oh man, this is so powerful. I'm, I'm so serious right now. I, I wish I had more time to go into this, but this is why I'm going to give you homework because you need to do the research. I read it already. I did it. And I've interiorized it, but you need to take it and you need to interiorize. How can we guard against these masters of manipulation? Christus Vivi, paragraph 181, says the following. Okay, I'm going to put it up real quick. All right. Christus Vivi, paragraph 181. 
Next slide says, think about it. If someone tells young people to ignore their history, to reject the experiences of their elders, to look down on the past, and to look forward to a future that he holds out, doesn't it then become easy to draw them along so that they only do what he tells them? He needs young people to be shallow. Man, I mean, if you're you know into hip hop, if you're into rap, I know you are. J. Cole, she's shallow. She's shallow. I'm not going to fill in the rest of the lines because we got to keep it PG here. But think about it. This is what people are today. People are shallow. People are fickle. And, and this is what the Pope is saying. We need to be careful with those people. He needs young people to be shallow, uprooted, and distrustful so that they can only trust in his promises and act according to his plans. This is how various ideologies operate. Think about this. They deconstruct. See, I'm a historian. I'm a church historian. I love church history. And right now, what people are doing to history is disgusting. We're trying to retell history through the stories of modern eyes. And you know what? We really can't do that. We have to take history as it was, as it was presented, as it was given to us. And I can go on and on with many, many, many examples of things that were good and now they're bad and things that were bad and now they're good and people twisting and contorting things to what they want right now. That is how various ideologies operate. They destroy or deconstruct all differences so that they can reign unopposed. To do so, however, pay attention, my young people. They need young people who have no use for history. We need, I don't know about you, India, but here in the United States, we need major education reform. Our education system stinks. And again, I don't know about the rest of the world, but we have to do a major overhaul here because it's disgusting to me what some teachers, what some professors are getting away with right now and teaching. There was, there was a big case recently right now of one of the teachers going on a tirade about politics and, and, and about one of the candidates. I'm not going to name any of the things, but you know she, she shouldn't have been doing that. It was just inappropriate, right? And, and, and think about this. We need young people who have no use for history, who spurn the spiritual and human riches inherited from past generations, and they're ignorant of everything that came before them. How can we throw away the Catholic Church 1,500 years? And all of a sudden, we're nothing? We were, we were the church. It's crazy to me. 1,500 years. Up comes Martin Luther. I'm not going to get into all the details. And now it's like, well, you know what? As my professor would say, we throw out the baby with the bathwater. I don't know if that's smart. I don't know if that's even appropriate. And so... We need to be careful of the people who are manipulating right now. I'm going to say it bluntly. I'm going to say it raw. Be careful, especially with the media. Here we are doing the Zoom and the YouTube and everything else. But let me tell you, not everything that glitters is gold. And not everything that you read is truth. Amen? Amen. Young people, y'all need to wake up. Now I'm speaking to you as a father. We need to be careful. I don't know about you, but here in the United States, it's like it's crazy. The media is posting all this stuff, and we're believing everything, everything that the media is pumping. God gave you a brain for a reason. Use it. I'm not going to continue with all of this, right? Uh, but I'm just going to say that we need to be careful. We need to be careful of being used, my young people. Go to the next slide, Ronnie, and jump into the following, 183. We'll, we'll, we'll skip that one. And, and 183 says this, and I have this here for you. 
this is again Pope Francis talking to you. Listen, listen, my brothers and sisters. He says, dear young friends, do not let them exploit your youth to promote a shallow life that confuses beauty with appearances. I don't know if you're following me right now, but this is really important because somebody has to stand up and proclaim the truth and not be afraid to do that. Beauty with appearances. How many people say, well, you know what? You need this to be more beautiful or you need that to be more beautiful or you need this to be sexy or you need this to have sex appeal or you need, you know, I mean, God made you perfect, amen? God made you beautiful, amen? And I'm speaking especially to my ladies out there. Now, I'm not saying for you to say, well, you know what? God loves me this way and whatever. And you, you leave your house and you're looking all messed up and busted. I ain't talking about that. I'm speaking straight to you right now. Have respect for your body. Have respect for the temple of the Holy Spirit. But at the same time, the outside is in everything. Remember what Jesus called the Pharisees. He said, you are whitewashed tombs. On the outside, you look pretty for everybody. And on the inside, you're rotting. Are we rotting inside as a people, as a nation? My sisters and my brothers in Christ, last point. Here it is. Finishing up, point seven, we have to think outside of the box. If we want to be true witnesses, we can't think like everybody else. We have to think different. And again, I'd like to thank Ajin. I would like to thank everybody uh, for inviting me to be a part of this because this is thinking outside the box. This is radical. This is different. And we're being united in a new way. Ministry is not going to be the same, my brothers and sisters. Sorry to break the news to you. But ministry is going to be different. And you and I are going to be the pioneers of that. So in closing, let's review those final seven points, okay? And then I'm going to put up the questions for you, Ajin, and then you take it over from there. But there it is. In closing, how can we become true witnesses? Here it is. One, strive for holiness. Two, be evangelizers with spirit. Three, accompany and listen. Four, have a new love for the sacraments and sacred scripture. Five, promote good liturgy. Six, help young people develop roots so they can guard against the masters of manipulation. And seven, think outside of the box. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I hope and I pray that these seven points taken from Evangelii Gaudium and Christus Vivi help you to become the witnesses and the disciples and the spirit-filled evangelizers that Pope Francis and the Holy Spirit are calling us to be here and now. And that's why I leave you with the final reflection questions. And I think Ajin said that we would do some question and answers. So um, I don't know if you put up the questions there, uh, Josh, at the end, um, but uh, we'll have these questions up and I have three questions, but they're very loaded questions, okay? Um, and, and it's the very last slide, Josh, okay? Thank you so much, guys. And there they are. So question number one, let me put on the headphones so I can hear Ajin just in case he tells me to put a sock in it, right? Here we go. Question number one. How are you serving and who are you accompanying? Question number two, in Evangelii Gaudium, paragraph 273, Pope Francis challenges us. Here are the questions. How am I bringing light? How am I blessing? How am I enlivening? How am I raising up? How am I healing? How am I freeing? Last but not least, question number three, how can I develop a new love for the sacraments and sacred scripture. I hope and I pray that this presentation today, this morning for you, will help you on the journey to become the true witnesses, disciples, and followers of Jesus Christ so that you can become um, the now of God. 
Amen. Amen, Father. Yeah, thanks a lot. So those three questions, uh, many of you, those of you are joining for the first time, uh, we are having this series of Empower Talks every month. Last month, it was true leaders are true disciples. Where true leaders are true disciplinarians. Before that, we had a session. True leaders are true. Uh, true leaders are those who create more leaders. Now, this month, we have the session. True leaders are true witnesses. So, Thank Father you, has man. given these three questions. Uh, so, I'll be posting in the Empower group uh, in which participants have shown interest to register and uh, become great and young uh, true witnesses in our time. So, Father, first question that I received <laughs> as we were uh -oh. expecting on Go a ahead. personal chat. <laughs> so uh, one of the questions that came from Darjeeling Sikkim, uh, it's a, uh, it's one of the uh, western side, eastern side of our country. Uh, okay. That is about, about your health. How did you manage to uh, maintain such a wonderful, how did you manage to lose weight? That's what the person is asking. And uh, can you give them some tips on uh, maintaining a good physical diet and uh, what is the secret behind that? The person is asking about like when we saw uh, you at Kairos, uh, you were having so much weight, but now how did you manage? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So very, very good question. Thank you for asking. Um, the, the reality is uh, that, uh, you know, it's something that I, I've struggled with uh, my entire life, really, uh, since I was younger. And um I, I just, it, it, I, I've been seeing a dietitian, uh, you know, for the last three to four, no more, probably three, four, five years. And, uh, and I just had it. I said, uh, enough, I'm done. And uh, I don't want to take my weight a little bit more seriously than I, than I was. And more than anything, um, it was all an inspiration. In the very first month, uh, I decided to go keto. And I'm sure you've heard of it, the keto diet and no carbs. And uh, so no bread, no rice, no pasta, no potatoes. I did that for a month uh, to try it out. And I lost 35 pounds. Okay. And when I saw that I lost 35 pounds, I said, wow. I said, it's doable. Uh, and so thank God I, I continued and um, I have to say, my favorite food was French fries, okay? One of my favorite food was French fries. And I can't even stand looking at a French fry right now because I've changed my whole eating pattern, my whole eating habit. Um, so um, it was a, a, a mind shift. And that's why I say to people, it's not, it's not, it's not a diet. Um, it's a lifestyle change. Um, so, you know, again... Uh, if I'm preaching, right, I'm talking about the word of God and talking about my body being a temple of the Holy Spirit, and then uh, I'm not exhibiting that, then what am I doing? Right? Am I being a true prophet? Am I being a true leader? Am I being a true witness? And so I said, I need to start taking care of my health. Praise God. Well, my doctor was very proud of me. I didn't have any health complications. So I had no high blood pressure, no diabetes. No, none of that. It was just literally, it was just me saying enough. Uh, I need to take control back of my life. And, uh, and, and I will tell this to inspire and motivate those of you who maybe do struggle with your weight. Um, it, it came from the book of Genesis. Um, it, it says in the book of Genesis, God gave Adam and Eve dominion over everything. Let me repeat that one more time. God gave Adam and Eve dominion over everything. And so I said, enough. I said, I need to have dominion over myself, my discipline, my body. Uh, and I got to do, do the best that I can with it. So that, that's how uh, I lost the weight, basically. Uh, praise God. Um, I started in December uh, of last year. And, uh, and, and I've lost uh, uh, over 100 pounds now. That's lovely, Father. Thank you. Thank you for that insight. Hope uh, the query is being answered. Uh, now, two more questions I have received. Uh, it's quite similar. But uh, uh, yeah, how can I be an imitator at my workplace? Another person has written at my college. Same as we 
we are able to be good witnesses in our prayer group how can we be witnesses yeah. in our college well members? um yeah how can i be a true witness at my prayer group how can i be a true witness in college how can i be a true witness at my my workplace how can i be a true witness in my home i think it's easier to be a true witness at at, at workplace and even in school more than it is at home because your mom and your dad and your siblings they know who you are and they know what buttons to press amen right julie you know what i'm talking about right amen right some of my young adults are laughing here because they they know um how can i be the true witness well i i gave you those seven points right um for us to tr- strive for holiness uh for us to really uh you know uh fall in love with with scripture for us to fall in love with the sacraments for us to um uh really live a genuine life and not live a double life and that's a big problem especially for my people in college my young adults right because sometimes we're one way with some friends and we're another way with other friends we need to be genuine we need to be transparent we need to be who we are at all times and so um uh, I, i know it's not easy but this is what the lord is calling us to be uh to be these witnesses here and now you are the now of god right i we keep on repeating that that beautiful phrase you are the now of god and so um for us to to bring light for us to bless uh, as i was mentioning before right um as pope francis says uh how do i bless people i mean this i mean this totally and sincerely if you are a person who uses bad language or foul language or 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 maybe a person who um i don't know has a negative outlook on life how are you enlivening and blessing other people's lives how are you being that witness but imagine if we were to start blessing people imagine if we were to just say hey god bless you you know can i pray with you can i pray for you um that would change i think uh the world it would change our perspective it would change people around us so how can we be witnesses well by again accompanying and listening by becoming those spirit filled evangelizers and by ultimately thinking outside of the box yeah father thank you so now many more questions have come i'll just uh try to club in uh, one question from the western part of india from pune uh, daryl from pune has asked Uh, just one question to father as how do we challenge ourselves to bring up those youth who have lost their way from the church and they question how do we bring them back how do we bring them back uh that's a great question thank you for that question um the way that we bring it, here is the, here's the thing it's not about us bringing them back it's about jesus bringing them back amen all right so You're, you, you we can be instruments and we are the instruments to help these young people but ultimately it's god's job right it's the lord's job and and um today for example i had one of my servers give a testimony that she went to a retreat and during this retreat um she received a hug she received a hug from another woman server and and she said when when she hugged me i felt the love of god and i knew that god was real so maybe it's just a simple hug maybe it's just a simple smile maybe it's just a hello maybe it's just uh you know um being polite to somebody maybe opening the door i know these things are are beyond ourselves now right i mean pe- people are like well i don't need to hold the door and people are rude Uh, but for us to be christ like for us to be like christ uh and in a very special way god is calling us to do that i'm going to take a little bit of water here because uh i'm getting a little raspy at this time uh, thanks ronnie <laughs> you're the man um so um i hope that answers your question um by 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 living out the gospel by by living out the truth by living in love by living a uh, for love in love by love to love uh, and 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 living in that truth and, and you know being nice to people 
Uh, bring them back by your example, not by beating them over the head, not by saying you must follow this, you must do this. They will fall in love with Christ if you are falling or you have fallen in love with Christ. Amen. Amen. You fall in love with Jesus first. And once you fall in love with Jesus, they'll fall in love with Jesus by your example, by your smile, and by your witness. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Daryl is very happy. Uh, he's just said that. Thank you. Okay, good. For the advice. Yeah. Uh, so now I'll just stick with the topic. Uh, we'll have a very in-depth uh, coverage about the topic pro-life. So that we'll handle later in the months to come. Okay. And there, there is an exclusive uh, conference also for that. So, Father, one of the questions related to today's topic is from Kuwait. Uh, the Secretary of the National Service of Communion, Hazel, has asked, how okay. can you accompany people when they complain they, and they are proud of themselves and uh, they are negative? Ah, <laughs> uh, Ku Kuwait, don't worry about it. We have those in America too, okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, when they complain and they're so proud of themselves, Wow, that's a, that's a good question. Um, if they complain, honestly, um, this has been with me the last month or two uh, in my prayer life. And it's been Moses in the book of Exodus. And, and, and I think of poor Moses. Why? People don't realize what Moses went through. Moses went through so much. First off, Moses didn't want to, you know, lead the people. God called him to lead the people, right? Moses was a murderer. He murdered, right, somebody, but yet God called him. Moses had a stuttering problem, right? He couldn't even talk, right? That's why Aaron was like his, his mouthpiece. And then his sister, Miriam, had to help him out as well, right? But here's the crazy part. Moses was the one chosen by God. And he led the people of Israel. And while he was leading the people of Israel to the promised land, they kept on grumbling. The book of Exodus keeps on using that word. It uses, they grumbled against God and against Moses. They complained, complain, complain, complain. There are people who are never going to be happy. There are people who are always going to complain. And there are a lot of people who are just full of themselves. But you know what? We're called to love them anyway. We're called to lead them anyway. I can speak for myself because I'm a pastor of a beautiful community at St. Anthony of Padua. I can say that now. But let me tell you, when I first got to that church, oh, it was bad. It was tough. They were not accepting they were not willing. I followed a bishop who was there for 25 years. 25 years! And the people were set in their ways. And people still grumble. And people are still complaining. But guess what? Ah, God called me to lead them. It's God's call. I, today, in prayer, in prayer today, God showed me something. He manifested himself to me in a very, very special way. And, and, and it led me to the point of tears because I was grumbling myself against God, saying like, I don't want to do this. And God said to me, it's not what you want. Do it. This is what I want. Are you willing to do that? And it's going to be sometimes with very prideful people, people who are full of themselves. And here's the final point. They're so full of themselves that eventually they're going to crumble. They're going to fall. Will you be there to pick them up? People who are full of themselves because of their looks. People who are full of themselves because of their health. People who are full of themselves because of their job. People who are full of themselves because they have money. All of that goes. And at the end of the day, when they fall, because they will, will you be there to help them get back up? I want to tell you a little secret. A lot of people don't know this about Father Joseph. Ajin, you may be surprised. Do not get scandalized. 
But Father Joseph rides motorcycles. Yes, I had a Ducati, okay? And I also had a Honda Goldwing. And I gave them up for the time being. I'm, I may come back to it. But anyways, Ronnie, you listening to me? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, and and, and my, my motorcycle instructor said this the very first day of class. He said, and I think we can apply this to the Christian life. There are two type of riders. There are two type of people who drive motorcycles. He said, those who have fallen and those who will fall. Amen. And it was crazy to me because I'm like, yo, is this guy for real? Like, is he serious right now? Like, he's telling me I'm going to fall. We're all going to fall. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. Now, here's the point. When we fall, will we get back up? And these people who are full of themselves, they're going to fall. Will we help them back up? That's my question to you be like Moses lead the people and remember Moses never got into the promised land that kind of stinks I mean after all of that you're 40 years I don't know about you I would be really angry really upset but guess what here's our consolation and I'm going to end with this who was at the transfiguration Hashtag facts. People are scratching their heads right now. <laughs> Josh, did you get that one? Josh is knocked out right now. <laughs> Was that good, Ajin? Was that all right? Yeah, good. Superb, superb. Excellent. Thank you, Father. So, uh, we'll uh, also <laughs> many questions are there. So, I, I will just stick to the topic. And yes. uh, we thank Father. Uh, one last question. This is the last question. I'll just try okay. to club it. Great, uh, great. You have two minutes to answer, then we'll uh, move to Thanksgiving. Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the, we'll take a question from one of the sisters. Many sisters are here. So sister is writing to me that at this present situation, that is COVID-19, having everything around us materially, how do we convey our message of God to the people around us? Next question. It's difficult for me to perceive in my prayer life. Could you give me a tip? Uh, being in the world, next question, being in the world and being a Catholic in a world with a lot of temptation, uh, can you give me a tip for prayer life? So yeah, good questions, um, and that's it. Well, you know, no, that those are those are excellent questions. Um, but I think COVID nineteen has ha, has been a sobering reality. Uh, I think COVID nineteen has sort of taken off the blinders from our eyes and made us realize how fragile we are as human beings. Amen. I mean, if we really, really think about it. Are you and I, are we really in control? We're not. I mean, I remember before COVID, everything was, you know, humming along and everything was going. And then all of a sudden we were stopped. You know, again, I don't know about your reality in India. I can speak to my reality in the United States. But, you know, March 14th, when it hit, it was, it was hard. It was tough. And all of a sudden, you know, we had to close down churches and we had to close down restaurants and bars and we had to close down gyms and, and, and stadiums and everything else. And all of a sudden we were stuck at home. And for those who are materialistic and for those who are worldly and for those um, who may still be in that mindset, I mean, just look around you. Death is real. I, I know I, I spoke to Ajin a little bit, and I spoke um, to a couple of uh, my other friends you know, from out there, uh, from Innocencia I've been in keeping in touch with, and, and, Li, and Liji, right? Um, and, and the reality is that it, it's been hard in India as well. People have been dying. This is not a joke. 
and, and, and at the end of the day, are we ready to be with God? Because if there is no God and there is no heaven, let's just end Zoom right now. It's meaningless, right? If there is no God and there is no heaven, then what are we doing here? And that's why we have to be the witnesses. We have to be the disciples. We have to talk about God's love to each and every single person that we encounter. Um, in that video that I wanted to show you that unfortunately you didn't see, look it up yourselves. It's Penn, Penn and Teller, a gift of a Bible. He says this, he says this, it, 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 this is an atheist. He says, if you believe there's a God, he's an atheist. If you believe there's a God and you believe there's a heaven, how much must you hate me to not talk about it? Wow. If you really believe there's a God and you really believe there's a heaven, how much must you hate me to not talk about it? In other words, if there's a truck and the truck is coming down the road and I see that the truck is about to hit Ajin, what am I supposed to do? Let the truck hit Ajin? We're like, oh, well, that's life. Ajin, see you later. No. My job is to say, Ajin, move out the way. Or Ajin, go run. Or even better, push him if I have to, to save his life. We would want to save Ajin's life, amen? Right? <laughs> There's some people that says, no, no, no. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, right? We, we would want to save his life. But think about this. How much do you have to hate someone to not tell them about the love of God? The last question was about personal prayer. Um, I, I don't know what you're going through, my brother, my sister, uh, 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 in regards to your prayer life. But let me tell you something. Uh, a Christian without prayer is like a fish without water. Let me repeat that again. These are not my words. These are the words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. All right. A Christian without prayer is like a fish outside of water. Prayer is life-giving. Prayer is essential. Prayer is necessary for us so that we can be in tune with God, our Father. Is it pleasant all the time? Is it going to be wonderful? Is it going to be happy, happy, joy, joy? No. But it's about being faithful. It's about being persistent. It's about having a constant prayer life, a communication with the Lord. And it doesn't have to be complicated. It's, as St. Teresa says, it's looking up to heaven. That can be a prayer. St. Teresa of Avila says, the, the fact that you just look up to heaven can be a prayer. And there's a great book, a great book by Brother Lawrence of the Resurrection. I recommend this to everyone. So this isn't just for the person that's struggling. This is for everybody. Brother Lawrence of the Resurrection. And it's called the practice of the presence of God. And it's a great book because he would literally pray as he was peeling potatoes in the kitchen. And Brother Lawrence couldn't stay in the chapel for long and do holy hours, but he could pick potatoes and he could peel potatoes. And he said as he was peeling potatoes, he would practice the presence of God. So to practice the presence of God, and, and I have to say in my last years, maybe my last 10 years, I've picked this up big, big time, a lot more, that it's in the little things. When I see a, a baby smile, when I see, you know, um, somebody, you know, do something charitable, when I see a sunrise, wh when I see, you know, some goodness, when somebody smiles at me, to practice that presence of God at that moment, in that instant, and at that time, and take out the time to just be grateful to the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. It's not about words. It's about opening up your heart. It's about opening up your life to the Lord. So I'm going to be praying for you, whoever that was. I'm going to be praying for you in a very special way that you could come to understand that prayer is that lifeline that we need. And I hope that each and every single person online with us um, you know, comes to realize about the essential nature of prayer. That was not two minutes, Ajin, do not kill me. Thank you. Thank you, Father. 
Okay, so we'll thank Father for sparing his time, especially this morning. I welcome uh, Renan Carvalho from Y4C Goa, Y4C Goa's coordinator, who was coordinating this event. He, uh, Renan is there. Yeah, I'm there. Praise the Lord. Uh, we'll thank, uh, we'll, firstly, we need to thank God for giving us this beautiful time. Uh, we need to thank God for the gift of Father Joseph for us, for the beautiful session. Thank you so much, Father, for your amazing session on true leaders are true witnesses. We mm -hmm. thank your band, Agnus, Agnus Day, uh, for leading us beautifully into praise and worship. Uh, it was really an, an anointed time of praise and worship. We want to thank in a special way all the youth directors, uh, all the priests and nuns who I con uh, contacted uh, so that they could join us and also send their youth today. So thank you, all fathers and sisters, for sending your youth for today's session. Uh, we want to thank Andrea for making the poster, uh, for making the poster for today's session, Empower. Uh, thank Judy and Teresa for helping me coordinate and mobilize the, the program. Uh, and all the coordinators for mobilizing it in your uh, regions and all the, I want to thank all the participants today, national as well as the international participants for joining us. Thank you all and God bless you all. Now I want to introduce uh, Brother Cyril to say a few words. He's, a, uh, he's a, our own family member of the YU4C and he is our true witness who we look up to. Over to you, Brother Cyril. Can't hear you. First. Father. Yeah, hello, Father. I wish yes. you, I wish you Buenos Dias, not Buenos Tardes, because it is 4 a.m. there. Amen. Buenos Dias is right. <laughs> and uh, I would say excellent, because uh, you know I am amazed at the energy with which you are ministering to us. You know, I, as you said, the whole day you are busy opening the center, raising uh, the finances. And then you are ministering to us. You know, as, as uh, the question was raised, I feel that, uh, you know, you are following that you must increase and I must decrease. Because, <laughs> <laughs> because I was also amazed to see you uh, very different from 11 months ago when you were at our center in Delhi, Jeevan Jodi Ashram. And uh, mm -hmm. you, I remember you inviting us to come to New York because of the lockdown. We could not come, but now uh, we were we were spiritually there at your center. Although you were uh, speaking from the the Rudik Studios, but uh, I know that you are very close to your center. Yes. And Father, uh, I really uh, feel that there was the fire in the belly as you are delivering it, mm -hmm. and because, without that, you could not do it. And uh, you know, you are you are very uh, very brilliant answers to the questions that were raised. That too, at 4 a.m. in the morning, without sleep, I think it was really a very, very, very anointed, very, very powerful session. And we are, we are so excited to have you back, Father. Uh, and uh, there are a lot many people who are going to hear you from the YouTube. It's not only those who are present here. There are also people hearing you from the YouTube. And a lot more people are going to hear you through the YouTube. So it was very, very powerful presentation on true leaders, true witnesses. And we are all very excited. We, I, I remember how you can inspire uh, the young people when you are here and when you did the altar call. I, I told our apostolic nuncio about it, that there were 22 girls who committed their life uh, for consecrated life and 46 boys who said yes to the Lord for a priest, uh, priestly life. So you, you can really inspire people. And uh, I was amazed to see not only the young junior sisters, but there were also senior sisters listening to you. So, so thank you very much, Father. And uh, finally, I would say, muchos gracias. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Lovely. In Spanish, uh, muchas Cyril, gracias. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank, <laughs> you. thank you so much, uh, really. Uh, uh, I, I really do appreciate you and I love you so much ever since uh, we were introduced to each other. And I thank you for your open heart, for your service to the Lord, to his kingdom, to his church, um, and, and for uh, your, your amazing, uh, you know, uh, books on intercessory prayer. 
And uh, I, I ask you just to continue to pray for us and, and we will be praying for you. Uh, you are Ajin's uncle. You are my uncle as well. Okay. And, uh, and, and, and we thank you. And uh, Ajin, I thank you, my brother, for keeping in touch as well. Um, and for all of you young people uh, from around the world, from India, um, you know, Cynthia, Liji, Eric, I saw you. I hope you didn't leave, Eric. I, I saw you there as well. Um, uh, I, I had a wonderful time in India. Uh, and, and, and it was such an edifying experience that I brought it back to the States. And, and that has been part of the fire in the belly uh, because it melted away some of my belly fat. Uh, so, so thank you so much uh, for all of you and for what you do. And uh, please pray for me and I will be praying for you. Sure, Father, thank you. Thanks a lot uh, for your lovely session. We were really enriched. We really want to thank Ronnie who was there handling the sound, ah, the sound engineer. <laughs> Rooted Studio. Thank you, Ronnie. Yeah, thank you, Ronnie, the one who is playing behind the stage, working behind the stage. Uh, he works for Pitbull and we have heard his music. Thank you. Keep up the great work. Be a true witness with Pitbull. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what we pray. Uh, then I would like to thank uh, Renan who coordinated it. So thank you, Renan, for all your hard work. May the Lord bless you. And we would also we fondly remember Fernando for that uh, lovely praise and worship. Thank you, Fernando. And thank you, Fernando, for we were deeply touched. Thank you, touched. Josh. I got many, many testimonies on the chats. So thank you to Fernando and the entire team. Uh, yes, and definitely. The entire team, yeah. And to uh, the girls, especially, thank you. I want to thank uh, two national youth coordinators joined. Uh, from two different countries. They are still there. Uh, Peggy, Peggy from Botswana, she wrote to me. So wow. uh, welcome our sister Peggy. Peggy, if you can unmute. Uh, we really want to welcome you. Uh, thank you. And many youth from Africa joined. Uh, Peggy is also the national youth coordinator of... Uh, Peggy, if you can just unmute and we can't see you, if, if it's possible. Uh, then also the U National Youth Coordinator of uh, uh, Lizodo. Lizodo Beatrix is there. Beatrix, can you unmute? I made you the co-host. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we want to thank uh, Beatrix. She's also the National Youth Coordinator. Then uh, the Secretary of the National Service of Communion from Kuwait, Hazel. Hazel is there. Uh, I'll show you Hazel. Hi, Hazel. Can't hear you, Hazel. Hazel yeah, no. yeah, now you, you can unmute, Hazel. Thank you. Thank you so much, dear father. It was wonderful hearing from you. Thank you to the prison worship team. I really was touched by your uh, anointed prison worship. Especially, I love the I Surrender hymn. It truly touched me and uh, taught me so much. Thank you. Uh, Brother Cyril, Ajin, and all the organizers of Youth United for Christ. It was a blessed, blessed session. I was really blessed to be there because actually I'm at work, but this week uh, we are at, uh, I'm off this week and I was, I wouldn't have got a chance if I was not off. So God made it possible. Thank you so much. And Ajin, Beatrice is also there. From yeah, 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 yeah. I'm coming to that. <laughs> so uh, then we have got uh, Agnes from Malawi, uh, Febby, and a few more people joined from. Uh, uh, Beatrix just joined from uh, and people from Malaysia we are so happy uh, and uh, Uh, Subi John from Ahmad, Ahmadi, I think Saudi Arabia. And uh, Father Jojo, a Capuchin priest, was also here. He sent me a message. Uh, wow. I think he's still there. Yeah. So I don't know from where Father joined, but he sent me a message and sent me a message with his WhatsApp number. So I want to welcome Father Jojo also. And I want to welcome all the senior sisters, provincials, uh, novices. I saw some senior sisters also. We don't know whether they are the provincials or what, but we want to welcome all of you. And we are uh, deeply privileged and honored to host you from India. Uh, did I miss Uncle anyone? 
Yeah, only only that uh, I I also forgot to mention the Rudik Studios. Uh, yeah, I think you already mentioned and the Agnus Dei Ministry Music Ministry. I think that's yeah. already covered. Yeah. Yes. So thanks a lot. Yeah, Varai Itzo from Zimbabwe is also there. I just saw. Then I'll just allow you all to unmute now. Yes, Wait. Hello. Thank Singapore, you. Malaysia big numbers are there. Singapore many are there. Okay. Oh wow. Singapore. Yeah. Um, Malaysia, Malaysia also. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was I was supposed to go to Jakarta this year, but unfortunately because of COVID. Mm. Uh, did it happen yeah 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 i know i know that was for the whole of asia oceania that was postponed for next year yeah. father so next oh, year we will invite you yeah hopefully yes hopefully yeah i have well, missed anyone i'm very really sorry uh, with the names that i've tracked yeah and also thank you to all the school of discipleship moderators and especially renan asked me to show the, uh, the teaser for freedom conference father joseph will be there for uh, the school of discipleship batch first many participants are joining and even for the freedom conference so conference then i'll play yeah so please encourage all the all, all the young participants to enroll for the second batch uh, registrations are going on first batch Ajin, audio is not there. No audio. Audio is not there? No. Oh. How's that? Oh, okay, wait, wait. It'll be there. Well, Ajin, on, on my end, um, I'm going to get going because I got to get these kids home. <laughs> sure, sure, father. In the morning. Sure, All right. Yeah, yeah, so I'm going to say goodbye to everybody. Okay, because uh, uh, thank God one of the, we have adult chaperones here with us, but uh, you know, I, I, I should take these kids home before they call the police on me. Okay. <laughs> All right. Especially Casey. All right. <laughs> so thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Father, for your sacrifice for everything. Thank you. We love you. Uh, we love you too. We love you too very, very much. All right. You have a special place in my heart and my regards and love to everybody. Okay. Sure. Father, we look forward so, to have more sessions from you. <laughs> amen. And we'll be, we'll be, we'll be in touch. I promise you. And this is not the last time you hear from rooted studios and Agnus day and from uh, duo, duo Christi. All right. Yes. So yes. blessings, blessings to everybody. God bless. Thank you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he let his face shine upon you. May he give you his peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen to yeah. everybody. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Father. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Father. All right. God bless. Bye. Thank you, Father. God bless you. Thank you, Father. Ajin. I am Sister Sangeeta. I have one request for you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, just hold on, sister. Sister Sangeeta. Yes, sister. I'll get back to you. Just hold on. So this was our second dash teaser. Are audio went again. If you wish to be my disciple, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. Thank you. Uh, I'll just show the next teacher, then I'll get back to sister. <laughs> uh,
this technology is fun. We are all learning. So uh, this is the Freedom Conference. This is a free Discipleship was September, October second week. We are starting, so registrations will go on till October fourth. So this is free. You can watch it on YouTube on our uh, Y4C India channel. So Father Rob Galia will be there. He has a message for you. Hey guys, Father Rob Galia here, all the way from Melbourne, Australia. I'm so blessed to be part of the YU4C Freedom Conference. And I know, I know that God is going to bless you so much through this. Make sure you attend with an open heart because you're going to be blessed. This will be a time for you to grow in love for Jesus. God bless you and see you soon. So here we go. Yes, sister. Yes, Hajin. Hello, sister Maggie. I want to tell that uh, we get uh, on the in the video on WhatsApp, but some of them they don't have WhatsApp. Actually, okay. myself I don't have. Being junior sister also, and many sisters are junior also participating in that. So you can direct. Uh, you can give us direct on the uh, email if you can. Yes, sister. Sure. Who is your group moderator? Uh, sister Bri Sister Bridget. Bridget, sorry, sister. 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 This. This was something. Can you type? Brinette. Yeah, Brinette. This was. 